For centuries, Campi Flegrei lay restless, but contained beneath Italy's surface. Now, in the last 48 hours, scientists have detected a pattern of fracturing in its crust never recorded before, while the caldera's floor has surged upward faster than ever observed. Ancient containment zones could be on the verge of failing, raising urgent questions. What is actually happening below? And how close is this volcano to erupting in ways we have never seen? The true stakes are only beginning to unfold. Seismic alarms blared across the Osservatorio Vesuviano network as a barrage of micro-earthquakes struck the Campi Flegre caldera. In just hours, waveforms revealed something new, a distinct pattern of brittle fracturing cutting through the upper crust beneath Pozzuoli. For decades, scientists have tracked the volcano's slow unrest. Now, the signals are sharper, more chaotic, and packed into an unnervingly short window. Instruments recorded hundreds of tiny quakes, too small to feel, but together they formed a signature that volcanologists had only theorized about. The caldera's brittle shell, already stressed by years of uplift, is now riddled with fresh cracks. Some of these fractures cluster along a thin ring encircling the uplifted ground, a structure mapped by artificial intelligence analysis and confirmed by a sudden spike in seismic energy. Residents reported faint rumbles, but the real drama unfolded below their feet. Sensors captured sharp jolts and low-frequency tremors, hinting at rock breaking under pressure. For the first time, Researchers could see the fractures lacing the caldera floor in near real time, not just as a slow trend, but as a flurry of mechanical failure. Each new quake is a warning shot from beneath the city, a sign that the system is straining against its natural limits. The question is no longer if the crust is being fractured. It is how much more it can take before something gives way. The ground beneath Pozzuoli is not standing still. Since 2005, measurements from high-precision GPS stations, like the one at Rioni Terra, show the caldera floor has risen by about 1.3 meters, a vertical shift that would swallow the height of an average child. In the past year alone, the uplift has added another 20 centimeters, with rates now averaging around 1 centimeter per month. These numbers are not just abstract figures. They translate into real, visible changes. Streets buckle, ancient walls develop fresh cracks, and residents report doors that no longer close as they once did. Scientists call this slow, relentless rise, Brady Seism, a term for the breathing motion of a restless volcano. Each pulse of uplift reflects pressure building deep below the surface as fluids and gases accumulate in the porous rock. The precision of these measurements is striking. Millimeter scale changes tracked by satellites and ground sensors confirm that this is not a passing fluctuation. Instead, the ground is rising faster than at almost any point in recent memory. For many, it feels as if the volcano is inhaling, stretching the crust to its limits. The question now is, what happens when that pressure finds nowhere else to go? Every centimeter of uplift is another reminder that the forces beneath Campi Flegre are not finished yet. Maps of the caldera now reveal a geometry that defies the old playbook. Instead of a single, tidy ring of faults, new cracks are radiating outward from the heart of Campi Flegre, cutting across the uplifted ground like spokes on a wheel. These fractures are not just following the classic circular pattern that usually marks the boundary of a restless caldera. They are branching out, reaching for the city blocks and ancient ruins that sit above. Geophysicists tracing these lines see more than just surface scars. They see evidence that the stress inside the volcano is searching for new escape routes. The rock mechanics are clear. As pressure builds, the crust does not yield in a predictable way. Instead, it breaks along paths of least resistance, sometimes linking up old faults with fresh ruptures. This outward spreading field of fractures opens the possibility that fluids, superheated water, gas, or even magma could find shortcuts to the surface. 
bypassing the traditional containment zones that have held for centuries. Each new radial crack is a potential pathway, a weak spot in the crust where the next phase of unrest could focus. Fault mapping teams are racing to update their hazard models, knowing that every newly discovered fracture changes the odds. The more the geometry shifts from a closed ring to a web of outward lines, the harder it becomes to predict where the system might fail next. For the communities above, this evolving pattern means the risk is no longer confined to a single boundary. The threat is spreading, following the fractures as they reach farther from the caldera's core. Deep beneath the caldera, the Earth is in constant motion. In the most active months, Campi Flegre has produced up to 2,500 earthquakes, an almost unbroken series of tremors that ripple through the upper two or three kilometers of crust. These are not the thundering shocks that topple buildings, but a barrage of tiny, sharp jolts, each one a sign that the brittle shell below Pozzuoli is under siege. During the February 2025 swarm, sensors recorded nearly 700 quakes in just four days, their signals clustering in the shallowest layers, right where the ground is already stretched thin by years of uplift. Most of these events are too small to feel, but their sheer number is unprecedented in the history of modern monitoring. AI-driven catalogs now sifting through the noise revealed that three-quarters of these quakes would have gone unnoticed by older systems. The pattern is unmistakable. The crust is cracking in response to relentless pressure, and the agitation is accelerating. Each jolt is a mechanical warning, a direct measure of how much stress the system is absorbing. With every new swarm, the network of fractures grows denser, and the odds of a larger failure increase. The caldera is not just restless. It is being systematically broken apart from within. Steam hisses from the Picciarelli fumarole, carrying a sharp tang of sulfur that hangs over the caldera. Overnight, gas monitors registered a burst of volcanic emissions and concentrations of sulfur dioxide spiked well above recent averages, forcing researchers to recalibrate their sensors. The air, already thick with carbon dioxide and water vapor, now pulses with a volatile mix that hints at deeper changes below. At the same time, thermal cameras trained on the ground's surface revealed a fresh hot spot near the edge of the uplift zone. The temperature jump was subtle but unmistakable a patch of earth glowing hotter than anything recorded in the past year. Scientists now pour over the chemistry, parsing ratios of sulfur and helium as they search for clues. Is this surge the fingerprint of new magma rising from below? Or the latest episode in a long cycle of superheated water and gas forcing its way up? Some point to the patterns as classic signs of hydrothermal overpressure, a system primed by decades of accumulating steam. Others argue the suddenness of the gas pulse and the new heat anomaly could mean molten rock is inching closer to the surface. The debate is urgent. Every change in gas chemistry, every flicker on a thermal map, adds another layer of uncertainty to a system already stretched thin. Inside the Civil Protection Headquarters, the language on risk bulletins has grown sharper. Years ago, officials quietly locked Campi Flagre at yellow alert an elevated status that remains in place even as unrest intensifies. Now in confidential meetings, volcanologists and emergency planners debate the meaning of every new tremor, every fresh crack mapped by sensors. The phrase critical phase starts to circulate in internal memos, a term reserved for moments when the system's behavior drifts beyond familiar patterns. Some experts urge caution, warning that the volcano's crust is weakening and that the risk of sudden escalation cannot be ignored. Others argue that raising the public alarm too soon could trigger panic, disrupt daily life, and devastate the region's fragile economy. Risk communication specialists advise a careful balance, enough transparency to maintain trust, but not so much that it fuels rumors or fear. Behind closed doors, evacuation maps are revised, and worst-case scenarios are modeled, 
but the public only hears measured statements about ongoing monitoring. The tension between scientific uncertainty and political responsibility grows with each new report, as those in charge weigh the consequences of every word released to a population living on the edge of a restless caldera. Campi Flegre has always been a volcano of extremes. Nearly five centuries ago, in 1538, a burst of activity forced open a vent near Pozzuoli, piling up the cone, now called Monte Nuovo. That eruption was brief and violent. But in the scale of this caldera's history, it was a minor event, a local blast that reshaped the shoreline, but left the broader landscape intact. The real measure of Campi Flegre's potential lies much deeper in time. Around 39,000 years ago, the volcano unleashed the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption, one of the largest in the history of Europe. Layers of ash and pumice buried the land from Naples to the distant coasts, and traces of this ancient catastrophe still surface in archaeological digs and seafloor cores across the Mediterranean. Some researchers argue that the fallout from this eruption cooled the climate and altered the course of early human history. Today, the same forces that once drove both modest outbursts and continent-shaping blasts stir beneath the caldera. The contrast is stark. This is a system capable of everything from building a new hill overnight to an eruption powerful enough to darken skies across continents. Each cycle of unrest is a reminder that, while the last eruption was small, the ground below still holds the memory and the machinery of something far greater. 500,000 people make their homes inside Campi Flegre's red zone, a dense patchwork of neighborhoods, apartment blocks, and narrow streets that twist through the heart of Pozzuoli. In some quarters, families have lived above the caldera for generations. Their lives are shaped by the rhythms of the volcano even when the ground is quiet. On busy mornings, scooters weave through alleys barely wide enough for a car. Laundry hangs from balconies above cracked stone walls, and shopkeepers sweep up dust that sometimes settles in thin, pale layers after a burst of shaking. The streets here are not built for quick escape. Many are centuries old, hemmed in by buildings that lean into each other, their foundations tested by slow, relentless uplift. Emergency planners know the challenge. If an eruption threatens, there is no way to shield these neighborhoods from pyroclastic flows. Survival would depend on moving everyone out fast. For the people living here, the risk is not an abstract threat. It is the sound of distant sirens at night, the memory of walls shifting during a quake, the uncertainty of what to pack in a bag kept by the door. In Pozzuoli, the volcano is always close, shaping daily life in ways that are both ordinary and impossible to ignore. Every instrument on the caldera edge is locked in a race against the ground itself. The seismic network, once dense and reliable, now faces a constant barrage of failures. After each strong quake, technicians scramble to replace shattered sensors and recalibrate GPS stations knocked out of alignment by the shaking. Some of the most sensitive gas analyzers installed near Pisciarelli and Solfatara have been lost to corrosive fumes or buried under fresh cracks in the earth. Fiber optic cables meant to deliver a new era of high resolution monitoring have been snapped by sudden ground shifts before they could transmit a full week of data. Even the backup power supplies buried for safety are not immune. A swarm in February left half the Southern array dark for hours, forcing scientists to make sense of partial records. With each equipment loss, blind spots multiply. Analysts are left stitching together incomplete signals, guessing at the true scale of the crisis unfolding below. The more the volcano strains, the harder it becomes to see what is coming. In this environment, forecasting turns into a high-stakes puzzle where every missing data point could hide the first sign of something irreversible. Inside the laboratories, the real mystery lies not in what's happening above ground, but in the chemistry of the gases rising from the caldera's depths. 
Every week, teams collect samples from the Pichiarelli and Solfatara fumaroles, hoping for a pattern that will finally reveal the engine behind the unrest. They measure the ratios of helium isotopes, searching for a spike in helium-3 that would point to fresh magma, and parse the shifting balance of sulfur compounds, each one a potential fingerprint of deep processes. The results are anything but clear. Some analyses hint at a stronger magmatic signature, an influx of mantle-derived gases that would mean new molten rock is forcing its way upward. Other data fit the story of a hydrothermal system, pressurized steam, and superheated water boiling through fractured rock. The sulfur isotopes do not match those from past eruptions, leaving researchers to debate whether they are seeing the signals of a new phase or just the chaotic churn of a system under strain. For now, every test result raises more questions than answers, and the true driver of Campi Flegre's agitation remains hidden leaving scientists and residents alike to wonder what force is really building beneath their feet. Computer models fed with decades of seismic and deformation data now simulate the unthinkable. In a moderate eruption scenario, pyroclastic flows sweep outward from the caldera's heart, racing across the urban sprawl of Pozzuoli and reaching the outskirts of Naples in less than 15 minutes. These flows, a lethal mix of ash, gas, and rock travel faster than any evacuation plan could hope to match. Simulations show that depending on wind and vent location, dense clouds could overrun the red zone and threaten hundreds of thousands before emergency sirens finish sounding. Ashfall blankets the region, collapsing roofs and choking infrastructure. In the most severe case, the models calculate that a full caldera collapse would send shockwaves through the Bay of Naples triggering local tsunamis and potentially injecting enough ash and sulfur into the atmosphere to cool the global climate for years. Each outcome is mapped in chilling detail, minutes until impact, zones of total loss, ripple effects that reach far beyond the crater's rim. For planners and residents alike, these numbers are not distant hypotheticals. They are the hard limits of time and distance, drawn by the physics of the volcano itself. Inside the emergency command centers, maps and models are only part of the equation. The real crisis plays out in the space between scientific uncertainty and the need to act. 500,000 people live in the red zone, but no one can say if the next phase will unfold over weeks, months, or years, or if it will happen at all. Planners revisit evacuation routes drawn in past crises weighing the cost of moving entire neighborhoods against the risk of waiting too long. Memories of the 1980s linger. Then, tens of thousands were sent away for months, only to return when the volcano quieted down. Some residents now keep bags packed, others refuse to consider leaving. The science offers probabilities, not promises. Models warn that if a major eruption begins, Pyroclastic flows could reach the city in minutes, but those same models admit the system might simply settle back into uneasy silence. Every day, officials must decide, act on incomplete information and disrupt 500,000 lives, or hold the line and hope for more clarity. There are no easy answers, only the knowledge that whatever choice is made, the consequences will echo far beyond the caldera's rim. Today, more than half a million people live within Campi Flegre's shadow, as scientists confront more questions than answers. The caldera's restlessness is a stark reminder. Even with modern monitoring, nature's timelines remain unpredictable. What happens here will test how we prepare for the uncertain and how much risk we are willing to live with. Share your thoughts on how society should respond.